This is the Sikkim Podcast, presented by your friend in the car business, Alan Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Waco, online at alansamuelsdcj.com. The Sikkim Podcast is a production of Baylor Athletics. Now, here are your hosts, Brooke Bednars and the voice of the Bears, John Morris. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Sikkim Podcast, a production of Baylor Athletics. Glad you're with us this week. Want to make sure you subscribe to the Sikkim Podcast on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Download it and uh, look for a new Sikkim Podcast each week. Glad to have with us this week uh, Coach Ryan McGuire from Baylor Volleyball, another uh, fall sport that now has a schedule to look forward to. It's going to be a fall schedule for volleyball, uh, Baylor and the Big 12. And Coach Welcome to you. We appreciate uh, your time today. J-Mo Brooke, thanks for having me. Fun to be here. Always love chatting with you. That's great. Thanks very much. <laughs> we love chatting with you, too. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, what a great year you're coming off of last year. Uh, you know, I, I don't think we want to uh, talk volleyball without looking back at the success. Co-Big 12 championship went to the Final Four last year, national semifinals. Congratulations to you, the uh, national coach of the year. What, what a season last year. It was a great season, great year. You know, we talk about his family. We just want to multiply the joy. And, and it was just a fun ride. Like, we uh, loved the day one. We worked hard. We embraced adversity. Uh, so blessed to have, you know, six amazing seniors plus the rest of the team that that really was all in. You know, if you could believe it, we, we had – you know, 18, 20 women and uh, no drama. <laughs> <laughs> if you can do that for, for the season. We have plenty of conflict, but uh, the girls and the athletes and the coaching staff just seem to really know how to handle each situation and, and move forward. So uh, God was our head coach. We love the journey he, he gave us and, and uh, hope he was glorified in what we were doing. You're coming into your sixth season at Baylor. Uh, came back in t- 2015. To see where the program has come from the time you, that you arrived to where you guys finished up last year, I mean, just looking back at that quick six years, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, it has been quick. There were, there were days in year one that seemed to last forever. And <laughs> I, I remember Coach Sam and I early on, you know, it was only two people on staff, and it's 2 a.m., 3 a.m., we're, we're just <laughs> chugging away trying to get things dialed in, but um no it's it's been a blessing for sure it's it's you know with that last group I think of a a Shelly Stafford who was who was there on day one you know my day one was also her day one and and so I experienced that journey um all through it so you got some of those athletes like the Katie Stegers and the Morgan Reeds that that you know tasted maybe some seasons that didn't go the way they wanted and tasted some seasons that they thought were awesome and amazing because we're we're two rounds into the NCAA tournament and then feel like man two rounds isn't good enough it's a sting and then they get to the final four um wonderful journey wonderful ride but you know really uh the support here at Baylor has been great we've just been able to dream big and and find coaches and athletes that are uh willing to commit to doing something that seemed nearly impossible. How have you, quick follow-up to that, how have you seen the girls' mindset kind of develop throughout the years? Obviously, it's every year is a different team, but to experience the, the sting like you described it and then to get to the Final Four, how have you seen them kind of, okay, we got there, we can get to the next one. We got there, we can get to the next one. Yeah, each each year brings its own journey and challenges. And, you know, I, I knew we were in good shape because, um, you know, when we lost at UCLA in, in 2016, like, like it was an upset. So we, were, we, we, we got in the tournament, we beat San Diego, you know, a ranked team in the first round, and then we lose at UCLA. And, and you got a locker room where everyone's just bawling and crying because they didn't want it to end. Like, like that, that is a... Uh, a good sign, you, you know, misery leads to greater ministries kind of deal. And, and it just, I, I, I can tell that the girls were invested then in order to do it. So we did, we wanted to go a little bit farther and then, you know, find ourselves, uh, you know, Colorado, we did everything right and we're hosting at home. And, and now it's kind of, that was a little bit on us and on uh, not, not being as battle tested as, as we needed. Um, the following year at Oregon, you know, I, I think we realized it 
as, as there were some sets in that match where, where it just tasted. I had almost kind of forgotten about it. I had some really good women's and men's teams before where, like, this is what playoff championship volleyball feels like. And, and you know, I had kind of forgotten that taste a little bit there. And so we were able to talk about what that looked like, what that felt like, and, and really hold on and, and learn from that loss. And, and, and really it resonated. And, and so we did. We tried to treat last year every game like a national championship, and, and the girls did a great job doing that. 29-2 last year, amazing record. Uh, we said to the national semifinals, if somebody said to you, uh, Coach, can you bottle that? You know, was there anything that was evident throughout your team last year that helped you to the, the long winning streak, the overall great record? Uh, what was it? What was the key to your success? You know, I would say competitive joy and, and just a uh, a like-mindedness of, of, of team and uh, lots of backgrounds, different beliefs, all those things. But uh, the girls were really all bought in. And, and when you say that, that means top to bottom. Um, you know, I my, my heart aches for like Hannah Flegel, who's just an incredible leader who helped change the culture when she came in as a, uh, as a walk-on and, and was like, the first in the gym, the last to leave, the hardest worker in, you know, her junior year was, was split in time with, with, with Hannah Locken at the time. And then uh, I, I didn't get her in until senior night, one set, like, like she went the whole season in that, that to me is like, man, that's the, the standard of service and sacrifice uh, because it didn't face how she competed. Nicole was the same way all the way down to the bottom, I, you know, I think of AJ and all these girls and just the joy on the bench. So our practices were good. Like, you know, we were ranked number one in the nation, but there was two teams that could have been ranked number one in the country. You know, we weren't always starters versus non-starters, but in the times that we were, like, I think they really cherished, like, man, what opportunity. I get to play against the best team in the country every day in practice. And, and so uh, we, we got after in practice pretty good last year. The, the practice culture really made made our season. Where do you think that mindset, that selfless sacrifice that you described, where where does that come from? Is that just the individual girls? Is that the way the girls kind of mold together and bond as a team here at Baylor specifically? What what exactly do you think kind of boosts that? You know, in, in recruiting, I love coaching college because college is this age we personalize what we believe. And uh, Jesus Christ for sure is, is the example of being a true servant leader. Um, don't have to be a Christian and attend Baylor, but at, at Baylor, you're just surrounded by so many people encouraging wise decisions. And, and you know, from Katherine Johnson, our, our chaplain involvement, to all the coaches and the people surrounding them on staff, to the character formation groups here, it, it's you're just getting a lot of wisdom. And uh, but from within the girls, you know, Brea Hunt, uh, Shelley, just modeling great servant leadership and, and they didn't get along at times they they had a hard time rough patch through it so I, I think for the team to be able to see them kind of flesh that out and, and here's how we forgive and here's how we love at different personalities and then you know it's the Holy Spirit's job when he captures the heart of Nicole and Tara and Marika and <clears throat> Bree and all the other girls it, it's it's a it's a genuine love that they recognize like man i can play with this great joy and peace and so uh we've always been about the process and, and not about the results and, and what we're doing and and i don't want athletes playing for me because i'm i'm gonna screw it up and, and make plenty of mistakes there and so uh, i think they just learn how to play free when they can do it for an audience of one you know it's always a tough question because we love having all the fans here but we're not playing for the fans we're playing for the lord but then uh you know our hope is is, is that how we treat one another reflects that love and it does get multiplied. And, and uh, when the fans come and encourage us, uh, it does make a big difference still. Along those lines, uh, two things really stand out to me from last year. The, the crowd here for the Texas match, like doubled the all-time largest yes. crowd you'd ever had for a volleyball match here in Waco. Five-set win over Texas. That was just terrific. And then you talk about playing for an audience of one. How about uh, a national television audience after you play? It's on ESPN. And then the team circles with Wisconsin in prayer. And ESPN is there with their camera, and they carry it over the air. Mm -hmm. That was just terrific. Oh, that that was special. And that, again, that's, you know, Nicole – 
prayed the gospel there as they we want to encourage Wisconsin and, and, and moving on. And, you know, it's one of those things you got to be uh, excited about. Like we, if, if we win, it's probably a different story that people are talking about there at that point. And so, um, you know, we just disappointed in the loss, but there was a great peace in knowing like, Hey, we gave everything we could and you no know, proud of Nicole and the team. And, and just, uh, you know, you never know how many lives are touched. And I, I had Wisconsin fans email me, call me. Thank you for that. And, wow. and from all over the place and, and doing that. So, um, you know, that's what being at Baylor is all about. I was going to say, we have the number here from that Texas game, 7,000, 357 fans. Yeah. That was a fun game to be at. Oh, that was a spectacular night. You know, that's that's one of those things where you just you wish you could slow it down and almost pause it so you can marinate and enjoy enjoy it even longer. Um, <clears throat> you know, it was a long time coming for for the athletes and the se- and the seniors in that one. So, uh, you know, my goal, greatest volleyball experience ever for them, and and so I know that's something they get to cherish for a long, long, long time uh, going into that memory, and it's just. Uh, again, fun to have all those fans and the support and the atmosphere come come into that because we maybe had seven fans the first match I feel in, in 2015. Wow. So that would be it, seven. It, it has, <laughs> has come a long way. Seven to seven thousand. <laughs> That's right. So meteoric rise. Yes. Just when we needed it most, another three-day weekend is here. Join Alan Samuels in honoring the spirit of Labor Day weekend, where we're working hard to give you the best year-end discounts on every remaining new 2020. Save on brand new Rams featuring the highest pickup owner loyalty in America, all priced to go. Or climb aboard a new Jeep and get big Labor Day event savings on every Jeep model in stock. Save thousands during the Labor Day sales event at Alan Samuels. Relationships, community, home. Now more than ever, these are the things that we're holding fast to. Home should restore us from today and ready us for tomorrow. It's where stories are told and relationships are forged. Within those walls, memories are made, laughter is shared, and family is gathered around the table. For these reasons, we believe in home and that right now there is no better place to be. If you and your family are looking to buy or sell a home, head over to magnoliarealty.com. Magnolia is a proud sponsor of Baylor Athletics. Now, back to the Sikkim Podcast, presented by your friend in the car business, Alan Samuels, Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat. Well, the season, obviously, this year is going to look a little bit different. You guys are attacking it with the same mindset to play for an audience of one. Um, We are only going to have 25%. It looks like the schedule looks a little bit different, but before we dive into that, I do want to kind of wrap up the 2019 season by talking about how stacked you guys had made your non-conference and how that, that, you know, when, when people first looked at that, I think there was a lot of, Oh wow. Like Uh we have some big teams on this, on this schedule and you guys knocked them down one by one and built momentum this year. There is none of that. And you're going to go straight into conference. Talk about the difference of that and how that's going to affect this season. Yeah, it's just, it's going to be a different story this year. And uh, we want God to keep writing the pages. And, you know, last year was a fun novel. And and to go to Nebraska and and play UCLA and Creighton and then Wisconsin and Marquette and have a great Hawaii team here, Tennessee, like like Missouri was ranked there um, at Battle Test. You know, to me, that is a, those were like win win type situations because we're going to know if we're ready or we're going to find out quickly that we're not and what areas we got to work on. So, um, you know, right now we open up Kansas, great coach, great program. They've been in the final four not too long ago on the road. Uh, know nothing about them. They got transfers, new athletes in there. They probably know us a little bit better than we'll know them. And uh, we haven't had any matches to, to figure out where we're struggling. Like we have ideas as we scrimmage and compete in the gym. But, you know, when the lights go on, we, we got transfers and new players and new positions a little bit. Uh, you never know exactly how they'll react until you get out there and, and do it. So uh, I do love our depth, but, uh, you know, as, as coaches, we're always worried about what could go wrong sometimes. And, and so I'm trying to just shore up every little plan as, as we get ready for this match. 
How different will that be for you and 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 Jason and Sam? Uh, I would guess normally you go through your non-conference matches and you're tinkering and learning things about your team, and then you know hit conference full stride. You don't have that uh, opportunity to tinker much this year. We we really don't. And and you know other years it didn't matter. This year we have so much depth where where it's uh, uh, you know if anything I'm tinkering with play one team on Friday night and play a whole different team Saturday wow. night. And, uh, you know, it'd be fun to do that and keep them fresh and, and it'd be different. But, you know, ultimately we're going to try and make sure we have the best chemistry and, and uh, momentum going out there on, on the court. So it's, yeah, we, we got a lot of tinkering still to do uh, between now and then. Do you like the way the schedule uh, ended up, you know, playing? So you'll go to Kansas. You'll play two matches there instead of the normal home and home over the course of the year. You'll play on a Friday, Saturday, the same team. Do you like how that worked out? Uh, you know, I, I conference is always made on its own. So whether I like it or not, it's irrelevant. I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I like to have control. So I at least feel like I'm bummed. I couldn't control the non-conference <laughs> start of it. So, but no, this, this will, uh, this will, be a new challenge a, a little bit a different type of adversity as you prepare for back to back and and we welcome that as a team and as a program and and uh, I've coached places before where you know we're flying all the way to Hawaii and you, you play multiple games there so it, you know there's some things hopefully I've I learned and can remember what I learned in in helping our team be ready for that but it's um you know, it, within our sport, you see a lot of four setters, five setters. As the match goes on, you start to figure each other out. And, and you know, short rallies as as you play turn into long rallies. So the uh, stamina becomes a little bit more important playing back-to-back -back nights, plus adding it's the same opponent. So you're going to start having uh, a lot longer rallies. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, adjustments are going to be made, and, and you don't have time in between to practice those things. So... To me, that's that's really, you know, for all the teams our conference this year, what's going to be the key is, is whose team can make adjustments from one night to the next uh, well without having all those, you know, two days prep time to be able to do that. Like you'll need to have maybe speculate and work on some of those things ahead of time and and uh, are those adjustments the right things to do? You know, if you, if you don't tinker with them and you make an adjustment, you might have lost a set or two or be down 2-0 before you can make that correction. Well, we never want to talk about them. We'll knock on wood as we're – y'all can hear that. We're knocking yeah. on wood. Um, but injuries occasionally do happen. People could be testing positive for COVID throughout the season. We just don't know. Um, does this schedule – how does this schedule kind of impact recovery time? I mean, it, they could get sick and, and then be out against Kansas both times or things of that nature. So how do you – that has to kind of affect how you guys attack the season as well. Yeah, you know, I think in all seasons you always want to be good and you want to be healthy. And, and sometimes, you know, some people would say lucky in there or fortunate or blessed with that. It, uh, it changes because, you know, if, if we're missing a, a starter, two starters, maybe two are injured and two are out with COVID um, and you're playing a good team that weekend, you you, you, you got to play them both times. You can't just say, all right, hey, we'll, we'll stub our toe here, but – Hey, when we play them on the road, or when they come back here four or five weeks later, we'll we'll be ready for them. You, you got to be able to do it. So, we uh, we've been able to adapt really well here at Baylor. I, I feel we've we've gone through a couple injury plagued seasons and um, shine pretty brightly through that. And in you know that I think that's part of how we train is 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 we do use interchangeable parts, and it's not A versus B. So, you know, if we got to plug somebody in, uh, they bring something new, they bring something different. And, uh, you know, I look forward to that. It, it, it really is. You never know when it's your turn to shine. And, and when somebody gets that opportunity, uh, they, they tend to do really, really well here at Baylor. Um, like I said, not all my decisions are perfect. And I've, I've learned that sometimes an injury opens the door to a, a new sub or creative lineup or positioning that I maybe would not have thought of on my own. And so, you, you know, when uh, adversity hits, we got to find the positive in it, and you know we'll we'll continue to approach it that way. If we're losing players for matches, well, okay, how can we get better? And, and you know whose opportunity to shine is it? And, and, and the girls, you see them; they they support one another, so they're they don't care who they're playing with. They they know everybody on their team can help us win each match. 
anything uh, different that we'll see on the court this year? Not on the court, but maybe off the court. Like, for example, COVID-related, you're not going to switch ends uh, over the course of a match. Anything else like that that we'll see? Yeah, you know, well, that'll be unique where you're not switching sides. So we'll, we'll day one, we'll start on side A, and then the next match, the second day, we'll start on side B okay. and, and just stay there for the uh, duration of it. You know, I, I think it'll be interesting because we have such great family and, and parents and friends that love to travel with us is we got to keep them at arm's length, two arm's length, like yeah. really limit that, that interaction. And I, you know, I, I'm still pondering on how we can do that because it's also a great source of uh, encouragement you know when we go to iowa state and hannah sedwick gets to see her parents like she plays pretty good up there on, on <laughs> with, right. with that so i don't want to not let her let her uh, athletes see their their families but you know how can we do it in in a safe way where it's it's not going to take anybody out from that and folks listening to us, uh, if you've you've uh, watched Baylor volleyball, you're thinking, I know, I remember Hannah Locke, and I don't remember <laughs> Hannah Sedwick. Uh, it's the same. Wedding she got bells. married. Yeah, I got married to Jay Sedwick. So yep. a football volleyball marriage in the off season. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. That's fun. And uh, Hannah Hannah Flegel did it with uh, Preston as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. That's right. And Shelly. got yep. married also. Yep. Shelly uh, Fanning, Fanning and Stafford. Stafford. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> If you need a trailer, Flat Rock Trailers has got you covered. From light-duty single-axle utility trailers to the big text tandem duels. We also carry a full line of enclosed cargo trailers. Need a motorcycle trailer? We've got them. Need a dump trailer? We've got the largest selection in the state. Oil field trailers? We carry a full line of big text trailers to handle all your needs. Trailer repairs? We repair all makes and models. We'll even rent you a trailer if you need to use one for a day. Flat Rock Trailers, your number one source for all your trailer needs. Find us at flatrocktrailers.com. To say my wife and I have a lot to clean is an understatement. So we go to TNG Chemical, where the pros know what cleaning solutions to use and give us detailed instructions on exactly how to use them. We never got that kind of advice from any other stores. And the prices at TNG are great, from general household cleaners to odor control solutions for our pets. We go to TNG Chemical and Supply. That's why. TNG Chemical and Supply. That's why. Bentwood Realty is a full-service real estate firm with more than 70 high-achieving agents who desire to make a positive impact in their local communities. Their agents stay actively involved in all buying, selling, and investing real estate transactions to make sure their clients receive the utmost level of service. Established in 2011 by brokers Kim Galvan and Rick Hines, both proud Baylor alumni, call Bentwood Realty today, 254-300-4800. They're at 601 Lake Air Drive in Waco and Bentwood realty.com we're visiting with ryan mcguire baylor volleyball coach on the sikkim podcast it's brought to you by alan samuels dodge chrysler jeep ram fiat still your friend in the car business alan samuels dodge chrysler jeep ram fiat the exhibition match you have the uh, green and gold exhibition you do that every year but it may take on a little more uh, importance this year as it's really your only time under the lights so to speak before you open the season it is. It, it's kind of a final tinkering, as, as you mentioned, for us to uh, see which athletes are going to work together well and, and how our timing and tempo is. And uh, it gives us a trial run of, hey, we're sticking on one side of the net and, uh, you know, waiting to see what facilities looks like. we got to spread out the fans a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's always fun, you know, and uh, the, there's so many takeaways from it. Uh, what we're doing well that we want to emphasize and, and what we got to make sure we, we fix that the following week. How important, I mean, we've we've touched on it a couple of times, just the buildup of, you joked, seven to 7,000 uh, of the fans and the support that Baylor has for the program now. Um, how important is it, 25% or not, that that 25% feels like 100%, that they kind of come and they bring it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I, I think that's huge. I, I think, you know, that having the people there makes it electric. We we want to make sure that, that we still have the advantage. You know, we talked about when teams are coming here. So when they come to Baylor, um, you know, we we play at a great level. But, you know, having the fans impacts how the opponents play sometimes too. And, and so uh, no, nobody wants to play with no fans. Like, like that adds – we want some of that pressure and some of that joy to be multiplied. But – um, cause it's going to, each state has different kind of laws and rules too. So 
you know, we want to make sure when opponents come here that people know, hey, it's it's a home game for Baylor and and not just a scrimmage or something else where, uh, you know, other programs might struggle to get fans in or have fans allowed to be in. And y'all made it pretty exciting. You went undefeated at home last year, so a little bit of incentive for people to snag those tickets. And I'll tell you, if it's 25% or if it's 125%, <laughs> uh, Yasiana Presley is worth the price of yes. admission. She really is. Uh, great to have her back this year. Uh, National Player of the Year last year. And I think we ask you this each year, how can she take a step forward? How can she be even better this year? You know, kind of like Shelly last year, is, is she's already done a great job taking a step forward as a leader. And, um, you know, you look at all the great players in different sports and genre, you know, to me, like the Kobe, LeBron, or something like that, like uh, they're still doing it with their teammates and then they're bringing better things out of them. So, you know, I, I would uh, expect we're going to make sure her hitting percentage continues to increase. We, we don't need more kills out of her, right? Like she's got, <laughs> if, if anything, no. we'd love to see that go down a little bit, but hitting percentage increase because she's made the people around them better. And, and you know, as a team, we're, we're I think, going to be uh, antenna to antenna, very, very good. You know, Marika came off a strong uh, finish there in postseason where people just worried about Yossi and it opened that door. So now we can kind of go back and forth and really move the ball around. Uh, but she's worth coming to see. It, it, it's, it's uh, um, it, you know, when you look at, think about national player of the year there's only one in the whole entire yeah, country right and she's playing at baylor and uh she's electric but um she does it for her teammates and, and you're really going to see uh a lot more leadership out of her that and and that's kind of manifested in in uh in the passing and the digging and the in the serving and a lot of the, the blocking that she's already good at like a lot of those little things that don't always catch the highlight films of her jumping out of the gym and hitting hitting the snot out of the ball, but uh, it's those other things that, that really help us win that she's really working on and fine-tuning. And, uh, you know, we want to see her put the, the USA jersey on someday and, and, and go win a gold for, for America. Wow. Uh, you mentioned the USA jersey. Uh, we have to talk about Kara. She – came in immediately as a freshman, made a huge impact, um, earned a spot on that collegiate national team, I think right before all of this yep. kind of went down, um, but still nonetheless a great honor. Uh, t- talk about just the wide assortment of weapons that you have up there on the front line and the fact that it's a huge benefit that they're of all ages. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is huge. You, you know, Kara is a freshman, you know, Freshman middle too. Middle middle is the hardest position I feel in our sport because you're jumping three times more than anybody, and coaches are yelling at you, get up, get off, go left, go right, get back. You know, her job is to either kill it or disrupt the play every time. You know, other people get to rotate back row; they can rest supposedly, you know, <laughs> sometimes. But uh, for her to make the adjustment as a freshman, you know, one of the top freshman middles in her class for sure, and um, really came on strong and and. You know, we need her to to take on that role that Shelly did for us offensively, and uh, she's more than capable of doing that. She's she's hit a couple balls in the gym this preseason where we're all recording it on our on our DVR on the on the court because it's uh, I haven't seen anybody hit a ball like that since I was coaching wow. guys. You, you wow. know, some heavy balls are bouncing. You know, felt like it's going to go through the ceiling in, in the Ferrell Center and uh, some crazy angles. So. Uh, if we can make that consistent, like she's able to do things that other teams can't replicate in practice. And so I feel that really helps us have an advantage because it's, it's hard to prepare for in that. And so uh, already instinctively a, a good blocker and, and, you know, expect her to have a great blocking season this year. But uh, again, Marika is at opposites looking great, but I'll tell you what, AJ's putting a lot of pressure on there as a heavy arm. And then our other outside spot, uh, you know, KJ is a returner for us, is elevating, jumping higher than ever. And then, uh, you know, you have a battle-tested uh, Lauren Harrison, you know, three kills per game type deal, heavy arm. And, and so it's, it's you know, she's one for two with Yossi in, in the gym and practice and maybe edging her out right now a little bit as Yossi's recovering from some knee stuff. So uh, we got a lot of firepower. We definitely offensively have a lot of firepower, have a lot of heavy arms in, in the gym, and, uh, you know, need to make sure ball control and defense uh, gives us a chance to keep hitting. 
sure there have been times in your coaching career where you, you've thought, maybe said out loud, man, I wish I could have her for another year. Well, this year that, that happens as uh, student athletes are going to get basically an additional year. Their clock, you know, will be extended for one year. Uh, what, what's that like to think about? You're going through this season, but everyone you've got here, you know, if they choose to come back, they can be back next year. Yeah, no, I think that was a good rule by the NCAA. And just because there's so much uncertainty, you know, we don't know if we'll go into spring or we'll go a couple of weeks and in the country we'll have to shut down. But um, that takes the stress and the pressure off because we were really trying to manage, you know, do we do we play for 2021 and just kind of skip 2020? Who do we sit? Who do we not sit? And, and they're all at different stages of life. Like I said, Hannah Locken became Sedwick. She's married and maybe a little bit more anxious to, to start her career. Um, yeah, but you know, she wants, she wants to finish winning it all. So sure. what, what yeah. does that look like? Um, no, but that, that allows us to really play everyone and not burn a year on some kids and save some kids and, uh, yeah, it just made it a lot easier for us as coaches to, to not be in that tough situation. Before that ruling, was there any conversations had about possible adjustments? Yeah, we, we had already talked to uh, Hannah Sedwick and, and Yossi about uh, about redshirting and, and just saying, uh, hey, let's maybe sit this one out because we really don't know. And, again, that was we don't want them to play three or four matches and then be done or – you know, our basketball teams, our heart goes out to them that, you know, they're right on the verge of, of getting ready to go win it all and it gets cut short. And, uh, man, that that would just sting me. And so I wouldn't want that for them. So as seniors, if we redshirted them, then, then they would have that opportunity. And if it burned for other, others, it would be unfortunate, but they'd still have the next year to be able to do that. Uh, so we did. We did have those those conversations. And you mentioned uh, Yasi, uh, her knee. Uh, is she going to be full go by the time you start in about yeah, a month? Yeah, she'll she'll be full go, and and uh, you know may not be touching twelve feet quite yet, but uh, <laughs> she'll she'll get there before the season's over. Relationships, community, home. Now more than ever, these are the things that we're holding fast to. Home should restore us from today and ready us for tomorrow. It's where stories are told and relationships are forged. Within those walls, memories are made, laughter is shared, and family is gathered around the table. For these reasons, we believe in home and that right now there is no better place to be. If you and your family are looking to buy or sell a home, head over to magnoliarealty.com. Magnolia is a proud sponsor of Baylor Athletics. I hate my job, but I don't mind getting up in the morning. I try to stay, but I can't wait to get out of bed. You ask me why, and what I'll say to you is true. Well, you can get breakfast tacos at Rudy's Barbecue. Scrambled eggs and brisket, they ain't fooling around. Salsa wrap, son, they're the best in town. Barbecue for breakfast, yes, it's true. Put a smile on your morning at Rudy's Barbecue. You're listening to the Sikkim Podcast, a production of Baylor Athletics. Here again are Brooke Bednars and John Morris. You also have a, a good amount of transfers that have come in and freshmen. Can you kind of walk us through uh, those new faces and what they'll bring to the program? You know, it was, it was great to have uh, Cassie Davis uh, join us from Colorado. Great length. Uh, already a good touch on the ball and, and she came in January I, I think it was up to me I'd bring everybody mid-year or red shirt if I had the time because just you know it's so hard to get them ready in two weeks and then you're starting starting season and um, and then uh, Giselle out of California for us uh, helps gives us some depth and shores that up at, at setting uh, but with our transfers you know we talked about Lauren Harrison all, already you know, she came and visited when we played USC second round. I, I felt like it was the worst recruit visit ever because I was I was just focused on winning second <laughs> round. I just, we lost second round two yeah. years in a row. So uh, she fortunately was able to see kind of the joy in, in our girls and, and our girls, you know, did it for us, I felt like, in, in that one. And, man, she's got such a sweet smile. I, I She hits it so hard, but I, there's still not a mean bone in her body that I've been able to find. And, and uh uh, it's fun having her in the gym cause she's so, she's really, really good. You guys will see that, uh, very early on with that. And then, uh, middles, you, you know, we can't replace Shelly with any one single person. 
uh, but we're going to do our best with uh, Andressa and, and Lachey and uh, both bring great blocking uh, with their games and experiences and, and you know they're not freshmen they're they're uh, uh, seniors with with one year of eligibility now two years of eligibility so even better to, to get them acclimated and uh, both were major uh, influencers and also inf impactful people on their teams uh, previous teams so uh, it's been fun having them in the gym and, and it's yeah it's it's they play like upperclassmen so I'm not having to worry about some of those new things when it's it's the first time for most most freshmen to have a little bit larger roster this year that that could be a real plus depending on how how things play out uh, it's always good to have um, uh, options with your team yeah I've I've had a season where I had to borrow a water polo player before <laughs> so we weren't forfeiting <laughs> So uh never want to go back to the uh the tiny roster again with that. No. Our our depth is, you know, it's a team that's it's hand picked and with with great personalities. Uh it should help us, you know, definitely help us where I think Big Twelve's still figuring out the rules if COVID hits and 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 what happens and um no, top to bottom we got some great athletes, so we're we're glad we can uh have that depth this year for sure. Where was that where you borrowed a Water polo player. <laughs> that, about, that was always about Viola? to ask. That yeah. was that was 2003 Cal Baptist. Okay, we, we went uh, an amazing one and 19 in conference. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that year at five and uh, but uh, won national championship 2004. It was it was one of those things where we were tested and and broken and beaten and uh, extremely humbling and losing record for me at the time and um, yeah, wife was. Just getting ready to give birth, firstborn son. I thought I'm going to get fired, and uh, <laughs> no, that that was important uh, shaping year for me as a coach for sure. You've been a head coach at a few uh, different schools, most of which are, if not all, are Christian based. Um, what you know, back in 2015, what attracted you to Baylor, and how, how what does it mean for you? Obviously, any person that talks to you can hear your faith and, and see it through your words and, and your actions. So why is that important to you to coach at a place like that, uh, that kind of gives you that platform? You know, I, I think it's, it's just my relationship with the Lord is very intertwined in my coaching philosophy. I, uh, you know, went to Biola university. That's, that's where I'm alumni from. And, and so after being NC state to go back there, it, like, paid hardly anything and I was teaching high school to still be able to do that uh, but that's all I knew and um, you know uh, CBU Cal Baptist was different than Biola and just uh, the type of students and, and the way the programs were structured and um, you know had some similarities to Baylor I, I, I know the president out there wants it to be the Baylor of the West Coast you know they, they're always coming out here to see what Baylor's doing to, <laughs> to kind of model model those things and um, to, to me, it, it, you know, Biola, I enjoyed the discipleship at CBU. I really enjoyed the uh, evangelism, you know, I'd have players from China, uh, Muslims come from, you know, Ghana, Africa, uh, to just some inner city kids that, that just needed, uh, to know what love and joy were that, that changed lives. And so, uh, to me at that point, I was, I was felt like, Hey, the four corners of the world are coming here and, and I'm called to be here and do it. Uh, there was a point during that time where, uh, I felt called to leave and, uh, to be honest, was disobedient. I kind of wimped out. I, uh, you know, had won championship with both men and the women and was returning those teams and, uh, God said move. And, and, uh, again, I, I regretfully, didn't follow that calling and, and uh, justified it different ways and winnings addicting and different things, and a lot of challenges and uh, justified my parents were there. Uh, so, you know, eventually made the move and that was all the way to Maryland cross, <laughs> cross, cross country. And, and that, that was, that was pretty scary time and, and uh, to do that. And, uh, but to be honest, I loved it. I loved it there. I, I felt a purpose, a mission. I, I think when you when you share God's love with others that haven't heard it at all, and they, they're hearing it for the first time, they're they're really engaged and they want to understand. And and uh, you know, truth is truth, and it resonates. And it was again, it was hum humbling for me to to be an assistant again after 13 years as head coach. But um, it, it was also some tests that I think were really good for me. I, I think of. 
Jonathan and the great friendship he was to David in the Bible and just, just how that shaped David and, and Jonathan became less so David could be more. John the Baptist became less so uh, Christ could be more. Like I wasn't sure if I had that in me, to be honest, because I've had a lot of great people in my life that, that, that helped me win a national championship as a player and those things, and I kind of was always in that role. So, uh, you know, was, I was able to test and see some things about my own character that, that I questioned to myself. Could I really surrender or sacrifice enough? And, um, you know, Maryland led to Florida State and uh, loved being there. Great head coach Chris Poole, who, who ironically was who offered me the job when he was at Arkansas when I felt called to leave. Mm. So I, I, I felt like, I don't know why still to this day, but we were meant to coach together. And, and, uh, I said no to him in 2008, but by God's sovereignty in 2012, 13, I'm starting to forget these numbers here a little bit. <laughs> uh, I ended up at Florida state and and again, I think that was God's sovereignty there. And, and, uh, we were able to work together well and, and I arrived at the point where I'm like, if I'm never a head coach again, that would be great. I'm, I'm very in love with my role and my family and what we're doing now. And uh, and to be honest, to, to, to coach at a faith-based institution is, is complicated. So I, I had said I'm never going to go back to a faith-based school again. And um, sure enough, Baylor called. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, right when God I was God came knocking doing, and said, ha, ha, ha. And uh, I... I you know, I, I think in the interview process, I didn't, I hadn't known that much about Baylor, but just wanted to make sure, hey, are, are we what we say we are? And, and so I might have even been a little bit over the top at that point because, you know, traditionally a lot of schools uh, have started with just the foundation of God's truth and that and, and have drifted away from it. And and I didn't want to be a part of that. And uh, fortunately, just me and the people at Baylor, the family atmosphere was more than reassuring that that's not who we are here at Baylor. And, and, uh, man, we got some great coaches here that I, I get to just, uh, learn from and listen to and, and, uh, sharpen me as a man, as a father, as a husband, and as a, as a Christian coach here. So, uh, yeah, I felt called to be here and, and, uh, I hope this is where my kids get to attend and, we want the fans to come come help me win matches so my, my youngest one can make it, <laughs> make it here to Baylor someday. And uh, coaches, you know, across the board at Baylor, uh, you know, you you were there leading the way with them, but then on your staff also, just your staff is very stable with Jason and, and uh, Sam and Kelly and everybody you have uh, as part of your support group. Yeah, that really is huge is, is – look at some of the conference teams that, that have struggled. Sometimes there's a lot of turnover and turnaround. And, and it, you know, I, I really, both Jason and Sam could be great head coaches today anywhere. And uh, I'm, I'm almost for their benefit trying to push them out because cause I'm running out of things to teach them. I'm not sure I got anything left. They're both such quick learners also. So I, I think they've grabbed any positive I've had and stolen from lots of other places you, you know sam is a coach's daughter and she's already had that that great influence in her life but um they also understand the bigger picture too and and so that that part makes it help so we can we can disagree when we need to disagree but but we know you know what we can, there's a trust there we can come back together and then shelby and and uh kellyanne just uh bring incredible glue and continuity to us uh, we talk about the best leaders being the biggest servants, and just look at those two. You know, Kellyanne specifically. I, I think since being here, takes on the job of like five or six people, and uh, has done that exceptionally well. Uh, she's expecting, so she's she's going to grow her family here right. in October, and and uh, fortunately, she's only going to have to do the role of four people. Uh, we've been able to hire <laughs> hire a new full time staff and, and technical coordinator, and, and that you know takes takes a lot off everybody's plate. And um, you know Ben's already been a great addition for us as well. Family is obviously very important. You guys um, kind of pride yourselves on playing like a family, being like a family on and off the court. Um, families are growing on your coaching staff. Last year, Sam had her own little future yep. volleyball volleyball Baylor volleyball star um how how's your family doing your wife and your family is are always at the games um I I've even I think we've attended the uh NCAA watch parties at your house with, with your wife you know 
graciously opens your home and invites everyone over. So how is your family doing and what does it mean to have their support as you guys embark on this, you know, very ever changing year this year? You know, to me, it's so huge when, when I have their support, because that, that's, that's the challenge, right? When you're at work, you feel like, man, am I getting enough done at home? And when I'm at home, am I getting enough done at, at work? And uh, <clears throat> Tristan, my oldest, just got his driver's license. So, you know, we've gone from a story of, of you know, wife was pregnant with him, my firstborn son, to like, he's driving, he's a teenager. <laughs> uh, you know, we're recruiting athletes that are in his same class kind wow. of deal. And, you know, is his his sister teases him. Oh, like you know, she's cute. You can you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're no, like no. no. I'm not, I'm not going that route. Uh, but he's doing well, and and uh, you know, he had a bad accident with his hand a couple of years ago, and and just I'm uh, thankful for his personality and how he's overcome that, and God made him in that. For uh, Katana, my daughter, like like she's just got a love for animals, wants to be vet, and. Every day I come home, I feel like we have more animals at our house. So <laughs> that, that is the reason I need to get back over there uh, as often as, as possible. But uh, tenderhearted and, uh, you know, Ryder's the one, our youngest, that just keeps us going. He's he's uh, 11. He's had a girlfriend for two years. And, <laughs> no. Um, you, you know, I spent all day Saturday with him and, and couldn't wear him out. I, I was worn out, but... From zoo to urban air to uh, video games to uh, top golf, and he's he kept on going. The reunion tower, like uh, he he just loves to go go go, and I love that because I was I had that energy when when I was like that. But no, Jen Jen is so huge, and and just because uh, she understands the game as a former player, uh, she uh, she really. Um, finishes off with the athletes that like some some I try and connect what with with all of them but uh she always has a special way of, of getting to the ones where I feel like Jen I'm just kind of missing I, I don't know how they trying to help them understand this or that and so she's able to relate uh, to our athletes as well and uh yeah if you if you sit next year at games you're not going to have conversation she's <laughs> she's uh she's encouraging she's shouting she wants to watch and and uh yeah i come home and they, they all tell me what i did wrong so <laughs> it's it's good she's training the kids in, in that but uh no we're we're doing good um as a family and, and just uh i think covid for everybody has, has been a challenge because because we want to do community together with other people so it's it's been hard but uh, we did have family stay with us for a little bit during that time well, and you had uh, some pretty significant projects that you were working on during during the uh, extended time at home. I, I my to do list was was flying. So uh, yeah, I finished a barn for uh, a new horse for for Katana, her treehouse. Wow. Uh, we built a uh, axe throwing uh, target so <laughs> Ryder and I could let out aggression and and uh, throw in the axe. So I screened in a, a patio. And uh, and then probably one I'm I'm most fond of uh, build a train garden. So uh, my my father loved trains. We did train rides as a family growing up. You know he recently passed away, and so uh, in the garage I've had all these these uh, big trains. And uh, yeah, so I spent a lot of time moving a lot of dirt around, and uh, we we got a big train garden in our in our backyard. So That's getting it done. It's, it's, it's that fun. is getting yeah. it done. So. I do want to know, though, have we hit a bullseye with this axe throwing, and is Ryder better than you? Uh, Ryder is not. He'll, <laughs> he'll be upset that I said he's a competitive one. I'll show you a video afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know uh, that we really appreciate all of your time that you've spent with us here today, diving into all the details. And I know that I speak for John and I and the rest of the Baylor family when I say we cannot wait to see you guys on the court 25 percent at the Farrell center for the green and gold scrimmage on the 19th that's at 3 p.m so we will see you all there everyone listening um but we do want to thank you again for your time and uh just to kind of wrap this up what are you finally looking forward to most about getting your team on the court specifically for that green and gold scrimmage is kind of like a okay here we are we are taking this step and let's do this you know, I'm looking forward to the surprise. I, I, in every match, every game, you know, even every practice, there's always someone that surprises you in a new and unexpected way. So for green and gold, I'm just looking for the surprise. You know, we, we talked about 
um, you know, Hannah versus Brea. We were trying to make that decision not too long ago, it feels like, in my mind. And the green and gold scrimmage is kind of what had us lean towards Hannah at that time over Brea. And then, you know, you look at both those careers uh, as you go through it, both huge impacts. So it's, yeah, I'm looking forward to just, just seeing who's going to shine in that one and, and what we got to do to be ready for conference. Wow. It'll be exciting. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Glad you're playing here in the fall. And I uh, hope everyone stays healthy and safe and injury-free. And we appreciate your time. It's great to visit with you. Yeah, always fun meeting with you guys. Yeah, best to Jen and your family. So thanks for your time. It's Coach Ryan McGuire, Baylor Volleyball. And we appreciate you being with us uh, this week. For Brooke Bednars and Coach McGuire, I'm John Morris. We'll see you next week with our next Sikkim podcast. You've been listening to the Sikkim Podcast, presented by your friend in the car business, Alan Samuels Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Waco, online at alansamuelsdcj.com. The Sikkim Podcast has been a production of Baylor Athletics.